Today, I'm going to be walking you through the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro 2020. Now, a lot of what I'm going to be teaching you applies to the older Adobe Premiere Pros as well. So if you have an older program, say 2015, these will work as well. There will be minor differences, but nothing substantial. All right, now let's get into this. So the first thing you want to do is obviously bring up the program. So we're going to click on Premiere Pro. Wait for that to load and you're gonna see this screen right now. All right, so you have two options. If you already have a project created, which if this is your first time, you probably don't, you're going to click here to open it. Now it's pretty straightforward. We're creating a new project, so we're gonna click new project. Now it's gonna bring us to this screen. So the first thing we wanna do is title it. I'm going to name this practice. The next is for your location. You can either click this drop down and it's gonna bring up the different places or what I like to do is press browse. I can better see where I want it to go. So I'm gonna keep it simple today and I'm just gonna keep this file in my desktop. So I'm gonna click choose. All right, so since this is a basic tutorial, I'm gonna leave all of these settings the way that it is. You don't need to worry about that right now. So we're gonna click okay. All right, so because I already had a program file that was named practice, this is why this came up. It is saying that it already exists to confirm the override and that this cannot be undone. You cannot name two projects the exact same thing because if you do and you click yes, all the things from the previous project are gonna be wiped. However, I had nothing in this old file, so I'm gonna click yes because that doesn't matter. All right, so now it brings up the whole program. So I'm gonna walk through each block with you really quick. So the first one right here is your source. This is where the unedited raw videos are going to appear that are going to be kept down here. On this side, we have our program or your finished product and your timeline, which will have your sequences. It sounds a little confusing right now, but once I make my first sequence and start importing videos, it's going to be a lot easier for you to see. And there's also different options up here, which we will get into later in the video. So the first thing you want to do is click on file, go to new, and you want to click on sequence. So you have the option to name your sequence. I normally, I normally keep it the same and just put sequence one, but you can change it to whatever you want. If you wanna just put first, you can. Now, don't worry about all of these things here. Since this is a basic beginner tutorial, you don't need to get into that. But if you did, you do have the option to change that later in your settings. So we're gonna keep everything the same and click okay. It already looks different now that we created our first sequence. So you can see down here all these different lines. The V1, V2, and V3 are your different video tracks. A1, A2, and A3 are your audio tracks. And then you have the option to mute your track, solo your track for audio, and also this toggle track output means if you click this, you won't see the video, but you'll still be hearing the audio unless you put mute. All right, so these aren't things we really need to worry about at this moment. Our next step from here, once we create our sequence, is we want to import our video. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to import some random videos that I have saved on this computer. So to import on a MacBook, you're going to press Control I, and it's gonna pull up here. If you are on a regular Windows computer, it's just going to be Control I. So let's find some videos that I would like to import. Hmm, let's see, so many different options. Okay, so we are going to I'm just gonna click these random clips that I have selected. And I'm gonna press, 
and I'm gonna press import. All right, so you saw what happened. All the videos came in this folder over here. Now, what I like to do, because they all come in and out of order, if you go right here and press sort icons, you can sort it in whatever way you want. The best for me is name. So because of that, it puts them in chronological order of how I shot them because I imported them directly from the SD card on the camera and those are the names. So 6237, 6238, 6239 and so forth. So now what do we do from here? So say you're scrolling through and the first part of your video, you really want it to be this main tent. You're going to double click on the video you want and you have the option here to go through and what parts you want. So I'm going to start it at the two second mark. It's just an arbitrary number, doesn't mean anything to me, it's just for the tutorial. So how do we cut it? You're going to press I on your keyboard for the start of the video that you want. Now, say you want this three seconds long, we're gonna stop it at the five second mark. I can't get it exactly right now with the mouse. Now, if you wanna get it exactly to five, five seconds, you can just go in the arrows on your keyboard, click the back, and you saw what that did, you can do that by the milliseconds. All right, so now we have a perfect five seconds and to cut what I just did was press O on our keyboard. So for the start of the video, you wanna press I on your keyboard and to end it, you wanna press O. Now to put it onto your sequence, you want to press the period. And it did that here. So you're not seeing anything. You might be wondering what went wrong. All it is, is the sequence is very large right now. So to zoom in, just press, oops. You just wanna press the plus sign. Now you see this blue line, it's highlighted on this box. So when I went to press the press, it magnified it on this source instead of doing it on the sequence like I want. So to change that, you're just gonna take your mouse and you're gonna click and make that blue. And then now you're operating in here. I'm pressing the plus sign to enlarge that in size. So now we have that little three second clip that I wanted. Next thing we're gonna do, I like to spread out each video. You don't have to, you can put them exactly side by side, but I like to give it a little wiggle room. So the next video I wanna import, let's just do a random one. Let's click this one, see what this guy is doing. So say I go through the video, you can decide to watch the whole thing if you want. And I like where that starts. So I'm watching through the video. I like what I see. I immediately press I. If you want to be more precise, you just go through with your mouse. You find the moment you want and press I. Now you scroll through, see how long you want it. I'm going to press O. Now that is exactly nine seconds in length. Now to bring that back on our timeline, I'm gonna press the period. So now we have two video clips. Next thing you wanna do, if you want to connect these, you can either drag it and attach it, or you can right click and press ripple delete. And that automatically drags that for you. That was a cool little tip I actually learned later in my career. So now we have these two clips. I'm going to add one more just this for the sake of learning. We're going to click this one. I want to start this a little later. Here we go. I'm going to watch this one all the way through. And there, that's how long I wanted it. And you can pause and start the video with your space bar as well as pressing the play and stop toggle here. So I'm going to press I to start and O to finish. Now I'm pressing period and I'm going to either drag it or right click and ripple delete. 
does the same exact thing, it's totally up to you. So now we have three video clips. This is where we're going to do some basic effects to really amplify your video. So we're going to go up on this top bar here and we're gonna click effects. So the layout slightly changed, but don't be alarmed. If you wanna go back, you can just click editing. Or if you want the graphic side showing like we originally had it, you just click graphics. You have all these different things. And what's really cool is you have a learning option to learn through everything that we're doing here a little more in depth as well. So that's what's really awesome about Premiere 2020 is it comes with this. Unfortunately, the older versions of Premiere do not have that. So that's probably why you're watching this video. So we're going to go to the effects tab. And now for the video, we want to go to video transitions, which is right here. Click that little arrow and there's a drop down of tons of different transitions for you to use in your video. The one I most commonly use in my day to day at work is called the cross dissolve. It's super simple. You can really manipulate it into doing what you want and it really just gives it this clean, sleek finish and gives it that, I don't know, professional touch, I would say. So now we're going to just drag that. You saw what I did? I'm going to do it again. We're going to click the cross dissolve, hold that down on our mouse and drag it to the video we want. Right here, click drop. So I'm going to play through and show you what it does. See, it just opens it up a lot slower versus not having it at all. It just slowly opens the video. Now say you want the video to start sooner. You can just amplify your timeline, which again, you're going to press the plus, click on the transition. And then when this little red line comes up, you can adjust the duration of the transition. You can also double click and set the transition manually as well. And that just gives it a quicker open. Or if you want it way longer for say a more dramatic effect, you can leave it longer. And to zoom back out, you just press the minus sign on your keyboard. All right, so now we have a short little video. We're gonna run through this and then see it does an automatic, just jumps to one video to the next, plays through, he's working on something, and then boom, it cuts to the next clip. Obviously, these are random clips. If you are really trying to make a professional style quality video, you're gonna want to use three shot sequences, which I might make a video about how to better operate a DSLR and learn those basics as well. So that should be coming shortly. Now we're gonna play that. So you saw that ending, it was kind of abrupt. It just, boom, automatically goes to black. So we can either put another cross dissolve, just like we did for the first, and it's going to fade that out. Or we can say if we want the screen to go to white, we can just click dip to white here. And boom, it goes to a white screen. There's tons of transitions to play around with if you are interested. Now let's get into the audio real quick and we're going to be wrapping up our tutorial shortly. So you want to just drag your mouse over the A1 line and it should give you this little icon. So you're just going to hold down with your mouse and adjust that. Now you can better see the audio tracks than before. So if you play that out loud, the audio tracks are going to be very quiet. That's a lot of natural sound and just background noise from what they're working on. It's not a loud environment. So when we press play, you can see the decibel levels are only hitting around 36 to negative 42, 44. So it's a pretty quiet environment. Now, if you want to adjust the audio levels, you're going to just hold down on that line and go up and down. And it does do this in decibels. 
Something you have to be weary of is you can have your computer set at full volume and you can be hearing loud. However, if somebody else pulls that into the computer and the decibel readings are low, no matter how loud you turn it up, it's really not gonna be that loud. So you wanna make sure as the video editor to adjust your video accordingly. Now for natural sound and videos, this is a pretty good audio level. You kind of want to maybe raise it slightly if you want to hear what they're doing. It should be hitting around, say, negative 30 to negative 42. And that's how you adjust that. You just click on the line and you raise it. You can also double click, go here on this line and click audio clip mixer and adjust that here as well and that'll adjust that for you. Hope I didn't do that too fast. So that's how we adjust our audio. Now there are different audio transitions, but for the basic tutorial, I'm really not gonna get into them because it can get pretty, there's a lot more to learn about audio than I have time for in this particular video. But the one audio transition I want to show is just the exponential fade. And there really isn't that many audio transitions, there's only three, but I don't I really have time to get into the depth of all of them. So we're just gonna drag the exponential fade to the very last video. And what that does is when you press play and you end the video and you have your transition, the audio of that clip is going to fade out gradually versus abruptly just stopping. Now, this isn't obviously a cohesive video by any means, but we have the start of our video all the way to our end completed. And that is how you basically operate Premiere Pro. Well, I do have time to show you guys one more trick and that's constant gain or constant power. You can just drag this onto your audio to start and that does give it that gradual increase so you're not abruptly hearing the audio at first either. So that's a good trick. Once we get into the more in depth about Premiere, that's when I can show you key points and how to really adjust your audio to make it super crispy clean and we can get into using Audition as well. But for this, I really just wanna show you the basics so that you know how to operate Premiere Pro because as you can see on my screen, this is a pretty in-depth program. There's a lot to learn. When I first learned, I cried to my instructor because I was just not understanding it. I didn't know how to use a DSLR and I am a broadcast journalist in the Air Force. So it was something that I needed to do and needed to learn to graduate. So it got pretty stressful. Now that we're done with our video, you might be wondering how to save it. You can just press Command S and that automatically saves your project. So if you exit out, you will be able to come back to it right where we left it. Or if you feel more comfortable, you can click File and then press Save or Save As. The same as if you were doing with a, say, a Word document. So we can just press Save or we can press Save As here. And it's gonna be the same um, type of format that came up when we first created the project as well. So we're just gonna press Save and it's saying that it already exists, so we can just press replace. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a little something. If you are interested in more tutorials and you wanna get more in depth, please comment below and please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a lot more videos ranging from this to the Air Force, my life. I'm gonna get into all of it. So press the subscribe button and I hope you guys enjoyed.